Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining us today. Today's webinar will be about Introduction to the Clip Studio TabMate, presented by Sarah Jean Chang, also known as the one with Bear. Before we begin the webinar, there are some housekeeping items that we'd like to go through. The webinar will be approximately one hour long. All attendees will be muted. Question and answer session will be during the last 15 minutes of the webinar. Attendees can ask questions in the GoToWebinar question box right away. Due to time constraints, no long questions will be answered. The webinar will be recorded. The recording will be shared on social media and will be sent via email to all registrants and attendees. The panelists for this webinar are Mario Quinones, myself, Joanna Brower, and Sarah Jean Chan. For those of you who connect with us for the very first time or have never heard about Clip Studio Paint, Clip Studio Paint is your all in one solution for stunning, ready to publish illustrations, comics, manga, and animations. Learn more at clipstudio.net forward slash n and graphicsly.com. A nice way to participate in our webinars are sharing your Instagram stories. We will be sharing your Instagram stories if you tag us. You can tag us as hashtag webinar at the one with bear, at graphicsly, at welcome, and at Clip Studio official. Sarah Jean, also known as the one with bear, is a freelance, freelance illustrator who specializes in a wide range of mediums, including both digital and traditional. She streams live on Twitch and has built a community for many aspiring artists with which she shares and learns her learnings and painting process. Her art is heavily inspired by Eastern culture and fashion, and her digital art style is influenced by her passion in traditional art. And with that, I will leave you guys and everybody uh, with Sarah Jean and her presentation, Introduction to the Clip Studio Tabby. Thank you so much. All right, thank you, Mario, for that awesome introduction. Thank you always for helping me out. <laughs> um, I will now share my screen. Uh, hold on, give me one second. Let me just make sure that this is the right screen. All right, hopefully you can see it now. Yep. Okay. So you can you see my screen, Mario? Yes, all looking okay. perfect. Okay, awesome. I just wanted to make sure that I toggle to the right screen. <laughs> Okay, hi guys. Um, thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to join the session. Today, I am going to talk about something that I'm pretty passionate about, and that is technology and an electronics. <laughs> I know that I usually, uh, when I do these webinars, I do a lot of uh, going over the tools and settings, um, and also just how I incorporate things into my workflow. Today, like I've had this thing for I think over a year and a half at this point, and I initially received it as a gift, um, but it was somewhat like an open box. <laughs> I still consider it as a gift. Um, and at first I have to admit, like I just thought it was somewhat gimmicky because it looks so, you know, it looks kind of like an art shape. And the fact that it doesn't really attach itself to any of the tablet that I was using, um, I just thought like, why would I want to hold this thing in my hand? You know, it just felt really awkward. And then I started using it and I've been actually using it pretty much exclusively uh, for a long while now. So I'm really happy. I know that uh, many of you in my audience actually have been following my Instagram for a long time. And then you saw me talk about this uh, quite a while ago. And um, there was a lot of interest and curiosity. And I was like, yeah, I'm going to go into talking about it. And then I never did. <laughs> So sorry about that, um, because things just got really busy. And so today I'm super excited to, uh, to finally have a more structured way uh, to cover this device, because 
it can be a little overwhelming to start at first. Uh, so a quick little introduction to the TapMate. This is um, basically a shortcut device designed specifically for Clip Studio Paint. There's a bunch of different shortcut devices, uh, like I know Wacom has a bunch, and then there's also like those um, like those that you rest your entire palm onto and then use your fingers to control it. It looks like a robot arm. I can't remember what those are called. Could have, you know, uh, sworn that I tried to remember it before, but uh, so those are also really good shortcut um, uh, tools. And also, of course, there's the most trusty a keyboard, which is what I've been using forever now. I I was a faithful, um, like basically ambassador for keyboards because I just feel like, I mean, all of the keys are there, you know, and uh, why would I need a shortcut device? I've never even used like shortcuts on my tablets um, that are just built in. Like I never used any of those because I just feel like I have a keyboard. Why would I want to limit myself to like having eight keys? Um, but then I started to acknowledge the fact that some of my workstations, um, a keyboard doesn't really fit or it fits in a very awkward space. Um, and that's when I started to look into or kind of became interested in the shortcut devices. Now, the interesting thing about this TapMate is exactly the fact that it's made specifically for Clip Studio Paint. And today I'll show you why that makes such a huge difference uh, compared to the other devices that I have used. Um, and uh, we will go over some of the setups uh, for each individual one, because when you go into the TapMate setting, it can get pretty overwhelming and pretty complicated. Now. If we look at the device itself, one of the most um, crucial thing why this is such a good design for me and why I pick it over the other ones is because of the buttons all being distinctively different. So there are two buttons on the top. There's one trigger in the back. There's a scrolling wheel. The scrolling wheel can also be pressed down. There are four uh, shortcut circle buttons. There's like a um, four wheel, not wheel, but they're in the circular shape. There are four buttons here. And then there's also one in the middle uh, that says Q. And then this one on the bottom is a power, a power button. So you press this one uh, or you hold it to turn it on or uh, off. But if you press it once, you'll notice the little light on the top changes color. So that is actually different presets. And we will go over that in a little bit. So there is red, blue, flashing red, and flashing blue. So these are four different presets that you can set up. Uh, and then as soon as it toggles to a particular color, it will just change to the shortcuts that you have assigned in that preset. So uh, one of the things uh, why I said these tactile buttons being so distinctively different uh, is because I've noticed that when I used other kind of short uh, shortcut devices, one of the things that I really uh, that I really struggle with is that they all feel the same to me. So because I normally just look at the screen or I look at where I'm painting, so with my finger, it's really um, it's really hard to tell when they're all the same size or all the same shape, uh, even if they have like a little bump on the top, it's really hard for my thumb to detect what it is. Maybe it's because I don't have a very sensitive thumb. Maybe it's just, you know, my body is numb. <laughs> I don't know, I'm getting old. Um, but the fact that, you know, these are distinctive, cer uh, like circular buttons, and then these are like four different directional um, buttons, and then the big one in the middle and the scroll wheel, and then these two on the top are controlled by my index finger, and then this one controlled by my, um, uh, what is it called? Middle finger, <laughs> non-offensive, uh, but you know, just the fact that they are so different, it's really easy for re uh, for me to remember exactly where things are and what I'm pressing without looking at it. So 
that's the device itself. I hope I didn't actually miss anything. Oh, I can mention that it actually just uses um, um, battery. I This is actually uh, the default battery, I guess, that came with the package. Uh, I've been using it for over a year and a half and it still has battery life. I don't know why, but <laughs> I intend to just eventually change it to my rechargeable battery. So uh, those are really easy to come by. It's not too heavy. So that's that's really good. It's comfortable to, uh, for me to hold. Now, okay, enough about the device itself. Uh, we will go into the interface. So I have all of these things kind of laid out and you might think, okay, that's a lot of words. Um, but if you click on file and you go into Clip Studio Paint Tap Mate, and then you want to select Clip Studio Paint Tap Mate um, settings. Now, you have to be careful, TapMate controller and Clip Studio main tap, tap mates are two different things. So this is a, a another device actually, but Clip Studio and TapMate is um, this particular device. So I'm going to select this one. And this is a good place to mention how it connects to my PC. So right now I'm, a P, I'm on a PC system and this is a Bluetooth device. Uh, so I actually have a little cheap um, Bluetooth dongle from Logitech, I think, and I just plug it into my PC and then it recognizes. Um, I basically just go into the Bluetooth setting in my PC and then I press this button to sync it up. And basically when, I, um, when I'm turning it on, it's going to automatically try to detect the Bluetooth signal. So you don't actually have to do anything specific. It would just show that uh, your PC will show that it has discovered tap me and then you would just sync it from there. Uh, I can probably show you how to do that later, but that's fairly straightforward. You can, um, if we'd run out of time today, you can just look up um, how to search for Bluetooth, Bluetooth devices on your PC. Um, and okay, so once it finds it, this is going to stabilize and it's going to show the red color by default. And this is the interface. And there's a lot going on here. So I actually broke it down into uh, many different things. And that means what you can tell it to do. So the important thing about TapMate is that because it's made for Clip Studio Paint, it understands each function and menus extremely well. Like it basically, uh, and that's the focal difference between this device versus other hockey devices. Other hockey devices are universal for all programs. Uh, so you basically have to set up your hotkeys inside Clip Studio Paint and then map it through other software to the, um, to the hardware that you're using. But in Clip Studio Paint, uh, the Clip Studio TapMate everything is inside the software itself. So you don't have to set up specific key, you can just tell it what to do. But there's a lot going on over here. So I'm going to uh, kind of go over exactly where to find each shortcut. And um, these, are, these will tell you uh, which key is what. Um, basically fairly straightforward. The plus and minus button are the two on the top. Uh, there's the wheel, uh, which is over here, and then the A, B, C, D are the little circular buttons here. Uh, the directional buttons are these ones, and then the Q button is in the middle, uh, and then there is the trigger in the back. So uh, let's go over these groups. So basically, if you want to find a specific function, uh, some of the, so I grouped them into three. If you want to command it to do something, there is the menu command, option command, and auto action. This is basically a particular behavior in Clip Studio Paint. For example, uh, saving, for example, enlarging your brushes. So these are grouped inside um, a particular behavior. So if you want to, if you want your uh, tap mate to do a certain action, then you'll want to find it within one of these three settings. 
Now the tools um, is change tools, execute tool rotation. Uh, this one is very interesting and we're gonna go into that in a little bit later. So change tools, fairly straightforward. If you want to select any particular tool in here, this toolbar right here, these are the two that you'll want to use. Um, so those are uh, select particular tool or tools. You will want to use one of these options. Allocate modifier key is fairly straightforward. This one is if you want to press uh, uh, Control Alt Alt <laughs> Control Alt Shift and Space. So you know how like when when you're making a selection and then you want to add a selection, you basically you have to hold on Control and then keep selecting to add to the selection. So this one is really straightforward. If you want one of the keys to be Control Alt Shift or Space, you will want to select this function. And then the next one is pop-up palette. This one we'll also get into in a little bit. Pop-up palette is very interesting because um, basically when you press the key, it will pop up the palette that you want. And then once you interact with that palette, it can either disappear um, or you can just hold it for it to show for a period of time. Um, but again, we will get into this. It can probably sound a little abstract right now, but if you need very quick palette access, pop-up palette is the one that you will want to select. Okay, so the next one is going to be a certain action with your hand. So how your hand is pressing these buttons and that's uh, execute with repeated tabs or according to the length of the key press or on and off. Uh, repeated tabs is obviously if, if I uh, hit once or twice um, according to the length of the key press is if I uh, you know press it down for two seconds or something like that execute with on and off is uh, like this would be on this would be off etc etc <clears throat> so those are what your finger is doing <laughs> I don't know how to explain that any better so <laughs> that's basically it so let's go into each uh, of these to kind of uh, talk a little bit about where or you know what is the difference between menu and option etc cetera, etc cetera. now just letting you know oh, actually let me drag this over here so I can have a pretty good comparison between the two um, so later on I'm going to show you uh, how I set up my paint um, so I do painting and I do line art as well later on I'm going to go over step by step step-by-step uh, step, how I set up all the keys, uh, which functions I prefer, and also um, just kind of give you a really quick demo of why I prefer it to be that way. So you can either copy me or you can um, sort of like estimate your own workflow and see what you need the most. But let's go over the function first. Now, menu command. Menu command is everything that's up here so if you want it to save open if you wanted to export to a jpeg etc etc if you want to edit um, for example if i want to transform and this is under uh, this is under edit transform and scale and rotate right so if you want it to do any of the things that's up here in the menu bar that will be the first one you select and that is execute menu command okay so the second one is execute option command this is things like uh, increasing or decreasing your brush sizes uh, this is like toggling um, the the colors for example this is uh, if you want to start like a um, layer property. Oh, sorry, my highlighter is, you know, freaking out. It's cursed on the side. It just doesn't want to go near the border. Um, but for example, if I want to do layer property and want to enable border effect, etc., that would be under the option command. So basically, these are behaviors inside these panels that's not included in the menu command and we will go over that later as well uh, because there are some stuff that i use uh, that are inside the option command so 
this is kind of how uh, you would start to get an idea of uh, where to find certain things. And okay, actually, let me put that down. It's it turns itself off if you don't uh, interact with it. So it's not running out of battery. It just turns itself off uh, to rest. But I'm gonna put that there for now. And auto action. Auto action is one of the things that you can set up. It's a sequence of action inside Clip Studio Paint. So you can um, basically all set up uh, like a series of command. For example, if you're doing, if you constantly need to resize um, animation cells or stuff like that, uh, different PNGs, and it's like a repeated action that you constantly do, uh, you can actually set that up um, inside auto action and assign one of the keys to that particular auto action. It will basically give you the entire list of everything that you have inside that panel. All right, so these are the three commands. I hope that makes sense and kind of clears it up a little bit and it's a little less confusing. Um, and then the next part is of course uh, changing the tools Again, it, this is very straightforward. If I wanted to select uh, a pen or a pencil, uh, eraser, et cetera, uh, change tools is the one that you are going to be selecting because um, it, it can just basically be like a button to jump to a particular key. Now, the interesting thing is the execute tool rotation. So, we are going to cover this one as well. So this basically means that if you press the same button, it's going to cycle through a preset and you can put in basically all kinds of tools inside these presets. And then if you keep pressing the same button, it's just going to toggle between um, all of these that you have already set up. So um, this is a really, really, really good one because it basically kind of like saves you the keys. Uh, you can use the same key for multiple things. So uh, for me, if I want to jump between eraser and pen, I can just use the same key to do so. So that is execute tool rotation. And then the next one, uh, the next group is going to be allocate modifier keys. I mean, this one, again, that is very straightforward and that's my lazy illustration where I only wanted to draw the control key, but um, I've kind of touched on this already. So if you wanted to press a particular key, uh, like control, alt, shift, and space, or control, alt, or control, shift, uh, that can also be one of the options. Uh, so that is allocate, allocate um, modifier key. And then the next one, again, pop-up palette. Uh, this one we will set up later too, so we'll go more in depth in there. Uh, but one of the palette that I constantly use is the quick access palette, because this really expands a whole other set of shortcuts uh, features. So um, the pop-up palette is really important to me. And I don't want it to like take up any of my working space on the side. So the fact that it can just show up I interact with it, it disappeared, that's awesome. So that is the pop-up palette. And the last ones, uh, these ones, again, I've already kind of demonstrated repeated tabs. Um, honestly, I really don't know how to illustrate that <laughs> because I can just show you like right here, but I still tried it anyway, so you know, just, you. move your fingers I don't know like repeated tabs length of the key press on and off <laughs> that's really the best I can do all right so um, hopefully that explains it again if you guys have any question later on we will have some time hopefully to help answer them and of course you can also send me any time uh, on Instagram if you want to but we're gonna jump in here. So um, actually before I do this, let me open something else. Let me open these two. Because this will be a quick demonstration uh, later on just for as visual aid. We are going to set up a workflow for line art first. 
and moving all the things around. Okay. All right. This is going to be fun. I, I am really excited about this because I'm always about um, like speeding things up, you know, like I really want things to uh, work really smoothly. And I don't want to remember having to remember too many things. Okay, so you see that flashing purple? That is when it's trying to detect the signal. Sometimes I have to press it down a little bit longer uh, for it to detect it. Okay, there you go. It's now connected. Okay, so we are going to set up the profile for solid red. This means that once the light is toggled to the red solid, um, it's going to execute these commands. And we are going to do a workflow for painting. Um, no, for line art, right? We're going to do line art first. Was it this one? Yeah, okay. So line art first. Uh, again, Clip Studio Paint tap me. I'm going to go in here. So plus and minus button uh, right here. I like these to be redo and undo for sure. Like I like having the redo undo on the top. Um, and then if I hold it down, it will just continue to go back or continue to go forward. So I'm going to keep those two. Now, so for A, B, C, D, we are going to change all of that. Um, usually for A, I need it to switch between pen and eraser because this is for inking. So usually inking, I need to switch uh, between drawing the lines and also deleting the lines. Uh, so this one, we are going to set it to uh, pen and eraser. And how we will do that is to use execute tool rotation. So let's select that. Okay, so it's going to show you this screen. So tool rotation settings is um, you basically have to tell you, uh, you have to tell it which tools you would like it to rotate between. So let me select, um, okay, there is pen and eraser. Actually, let me just start a brand new one just so you know how to do it. You can uh, use this little icon here and then do create new settings. And let's just say that, uh, this one is webinar, yay. Okay, that's very not clear, but that's okay. And then we are gonna click on settings, uh, number one. Yeah, I love that it shows up on my other monitor. Okay, so settings number one, I'm going to select pen. Now you can actually sh select any particular pen that you want, or you can just select the pen uh, subtool because uh, the difference would be if you select it to the pen subtool, it will just automatically select the last pen tool that you have. Um, but if you select any of the specific one, then that means uh, if I press it, it's going to go to that specific one instead of the last one you used. Um, but because um, I constantly use different pens, so um, I'm just going to select that one. Okay, so pen. All right, and then same thing with eraser. Uh, we'll go into settings and then we'll find eraser um, and then we'll select eraser. Okay, so that sounds pretty good. Uh, so we would do uh, AB. I knew I would regret typing in webinar, yay. <laughs> but, you know, I remember it. It's just going to, I'm just going to change it back just so it's a little bit clearer for you guys. Okay, pen and eraser, there you go. <laughs> That's the one. Okay, so for B, I want it to be pencil specifically because I usually do the pencil sketch first and then I start using the pen. Um, but sometimes I go back and forth uh, between the two. So this one is just going to be change tool and then we'll select pencil. And usually for pencil, I only really use one type, which is rough pencil. That's really the only one that I use for sketching. So we're just going to uh, select that one. Now, you will notice that this one says rough pencil change temporarily. So this means that, okay, let's try OK. And then we're going to hit 
uh, num uh, A. So button A is the upper left one. I'm just gonna like press it in a very awkward angle so then you can kind of tell. Uh, so right now I'm using a pen uh, and again using the eraser. And if I change it to like rough eraser right now and then change it back to pen and then change it back to eraser, see it's selecting the last one that I had selected. Um, there you go. And then if I change it to pencil, right now currently it has changed temporarily selected. So you see, if I click it, it's gonna switch back to eraser automatically. So basically this, um, this feature, if you have that toggled, uh, you will have to hold it down for it to use. So that's what change temporarily means. Um, if you don't want to keep on having hold it down, like I'm not gonna, going to hold down this entire button uh, as I'm sketching. So let's go back. Mm -hmm. So let's go back and go into settings and just simply check this one off. So it's on the top. So check off, switch to a temporarily. Now it has disappeared. So uh, this is basically what I use between these buttons for my line art, pen eraser and rough pencil. Now the next two one, which one would I use? Um, so everybody knows that one of the biggest uh, strength in Clip Studio Paint is the vector layer for line art. So inside my line art workflow, I want to optimize that because I'm constantly changing the, the lines. Um, and for example, if I mess up a line, if I want it to uh, connect it or um, like change the curve and whatnot, that's what I want to do. So the C button, I'm also going to change the tool Okay, so let's deselect switch tool temporarily again. And then we are gonna go into correct line because I'm constantly correcting my lines. <laughs> no, like if you can get your lines right the first time around, good for you, but I cannot. Um, so correct lines, and sometimes I just like draw two stroke and I want to quickly connect them. So connect vector line is the one that I usually go for. And then for D, uh, we're gonna also do change tools. Again, turn that one off. <clears throat> for D, can correct lines. And I want to do pinch vector line. This is where you can, this is the tool that you can move a line basically. So that's basically it um, for, in terms of my tools. Changing my pen eraser, if the, lines are disconnected, I connect them. And if they're in the wrong place, I pinch them. So A, B, C, D, that's done for my line art. Now the uh, next two parts, zooming in and out, I do like them there. Um, I don't really change my brush sizes when I am doing uh, line art. So uh, up, down is zooming in and out, I'm okay with that. And then if I press this, um, it's going to fit to screen. So all of these, um, so zoom in, I'm going to just show you settings. Um, so zooming in is under view, under the execute com uh, menu command because it's part of the uh, functions that you can find up here. So if you want it to zoom in and out or fit to screen, they are under view inside the execute menu command. So those are the three, I'm going to just leave them. And then the trigger button, all right, so the trigger button is the eyedropper. I also like that. And I this one, I leave it to change temporarily because I don't want to have to press uh, any key to go back to my uh, tool that I was using. So I like the eyedropper uh, that is just holding it down because usually that's super quick. I hold it down, I tab, and then you know, that's it. <laughs> so that is the eyedropper. I'm just going to leave that. Um, and then, so direction pad uh, up and down. Now this is where I would use um, the, the uh, what is it called? Change brush size, just in case. So I'm going to go into here. And again, if you remember from before, changing brush sizes would be underneath 
execute option command because it's inside one of the palettes. So you see tool property palette, brush size, uh, and then this one would be increase brush size because up, I feel like up just gets bigger and then down will get smaller. So uh, increase, increase brush size under the tool property palette and brush size. Okay, so that one. And then this one down again, it's the same thing. Going to be option, uh, tool property, brush size, and reduce. So this just kind of goes by, uh, this is similar to, not similar, this is basically exactly the brush size that you can see on the upper right here, that that's exactly that option. Now, if um, you wanted the brush size palette, uh, which I know a lot of people actually have. Uh, you can also have it select the brush size preset, uh, but that's like, I don't really have any brush size preset. Um, and I kind of just like to have them gradually increase. So I usually go for uh, those two particular ones. All right, so we're gonna go into the last three and that would be directional button uh, right. So, okay, let's try this one. Now I need to think, really think about what I usually do, like my behavior when I'm drawing. Sometimes I would draw, um, for example, I draw the head and then I re realize the head is too small and I want to select it and I want to enlarge it. So in my opinion, uh, thinking about my workflow and what I usually do really helps me figure out what I want to put in here. And so in those action, it will be lasso it and then scale it. So we are going to set that one up. And um, okay, so we are gonna go with execute with repeated tabs. Okay. So basically if I tap once, I want it to do lasso, I want it to switch to lasso. If I tap it twice, I want it to switch to uh, scaling. So first one is going to be this one, uh, which is tools, and lasso would be under selection area. So lasso, there you go. Okay, so that would be lasso, and then there would be uh, scale and rotate, which is under the menu command because that is part of the edit. So edit, Let's see, I think it was transform. Yes, it was transform, edit, transform, scale, and rotate. So, and that's it. Um, that would basically be, um, if I tap once, it's going to go into lasso. If I tap twice, it's going to scale and rotate the area that I have selected. So I, I like this setup a lot. And the reason why this cannot be part of the tool rotation is because skill and rotate is not a tool. Uh, and therefore, you know, the repeated tabs is where it comes in super, super handy. Okay. So the left one is, okay, sometimes if I lasso it, I want to move the area that I last lassoed. Like for example, I drew the arm in a completely wrong place. So I'm going to like move that one. Um, so let's go into move layer. Like if I use move, that would be a change tool. Okay, so, uh, but not this move because this move moves the canvas. So it's up down here, move layer um, and just um, move layer, great. Okay. So I'm okay with this one being changed temporarily because again, this is a really fast action where I just sort of like select, move, and then done, and then go back to drawing immediately. So I'm okay with this one uh, being changed temporarily so I don't have to like tap back to um, my, my pen or pencil. Okay, and the Q button is quick access, and this is going to be a pop-up palette. And this is the default. This is exactly why I like it. Oh, actually, you know what, um, okay, we'll get back to this later, but the default is under display pop-out while pressing the button. So we're gonna leave that there. Okay, so 
Oh, that actually already went quite a bit of time. Hmm. Okay, I will need to speed up a little bit. Uh, let's actually do, okay. Huh. What happened here? That's weird. Okay, uh, so zoom in and out is going to be here. And um, I can do up and down to increase my brush size. So I'm going to use the sketch pen, uh, the sketch pencil to kind of quickly draw a sketch. And let's pretend this is a very masterfully done bear. Like this is just the most amazing drawing that you've ever seen. Okay, now where did my vector layer go? <laughs> That's what I was, okay, there you go. Ah, oh, that made me panic just a slightly bit. I don't know why. Um, okay, so that was the pencil sketch. Uh, usually I just have one raster layer and have the pencil sketch on the bottom. And then I will start a vector layer on the top and then hit the A button to go into pen. Okay, let's draw this. Really beautiful. Okay, so that's not connected. So I press C to connect it. There, there you go. Let's just pretend all of this is really amazing work right now, okay? And I hit D to move uh, my lines. That's definitely a circle. And then press A again to go back to, um, <laughs> What is going on? Okay, um, press eight again to switch to eraser. Oh, this is a giant re eraser right now. Okay, uh, there. And switch back to pen. Uh, I'm really fighting with time. And then again to eraser. Right. Okay, awesome. And if I want to like move the mouth, like I feel like the mouth is in the wrong place, I just hit once on the right side because that was the lasso. So I lasso it. If I want to move it, uh, it was the left side. So I, I hold that one down because it was changed temporarily and I change it to like over here, I don't know. Okay, so if I release it, it's gonna go back to the lasso tool because that was the last one that I used. Uh, and I double tap it again. So double tap was scaling. There. And then just hit OK. And some people, like, because when you're last one, you will probably want to, like, expand. Usually I just click on the upper right, um, add to the selection. So then this one can basically just self. Um, so I don't really need the control key because I can just use this tab um, on the top to like select, deselect, um, and do all that. Uh, so that was basically my workflow uh, for my pen and fairly straightforward. That was really easy, but even just doing line art, being able to switch between all of this increases my speed by quite a large amount. And like if I was to go on my keyboard, sometimes I just need to like look at my keys and um, because if I my, my finger is traveling across like a, a fairly long range, then I kind of lose my space on the keyboard. So having this just in my hand is, is really, really, really easy. Okay, so the quick axis. Now this is the quick axis palette. We are going to touch on this more in the next setup that we're gonna do. But right now you're seeing like I'm holding it down um, and if I release it, it's gonna disappear. I don't really like that um, because I, I have to continue holding it down uh, and do something with it. So uh, we are actually going to change that. Okay, so let's do pop-up palette, again, settings. Uh, I would rather it just display and hide pop-up. So I'm gonna change the quick access to that one instead. So now, if I click it, I can, you know, um, basically click it again, it will disappear, click it, um, but I can actually just tap and it's going to, um, hold on, it's going to disappear on its own uh, when I interact with a canvas. So I like that a lot more. It doesn't make me feel like I have to hold onto the button 
um, and that is the quick access, which we will go into in just a little bit. So that's the line art and the painting. Now painting is also fairly similar. Let's change to another another color. Uh, which color should we use? Okay, this one. Bye, 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 bye. Okay, so this is the painting workflow. Now painting usually I use two uh, I use two brushes, which is the uh, the default um, brush, the oil paint flat brush in in Clip Studio Paint, and that's like an older brush that you can now re-download uh, via the download. Um, I think. I think you have to download it via their asset store right now, um, but that's like an old preset brush that I really, really like, and also another one that I designed. Um, so we're gonna go into File. Okay, so File, Clip Studio Paint, Tap Mate, and we're gonna change the preset to Solid Blue. So this is Set 2, uh, this is Set 1, and this is Set 2. Okay, now let's speed this thing up a little bit. Okay, give me one second. Oh, sorry. One second. All right. Um, there. Okay, blue. So A, B, I, uh, sorry, plus and minus, I still wanted to do redo and undo. Now, A button, I wanted to switch between the two paintbrushes that I use, and that is uh, going to be execute a tool rotation. Uh, again, and this I already preset. This is the oil paint flat and also the jitter brush. Again, you can just uh, add more into the roster if you want, um, but this is basically just under the brushes that I have. So this is the the one super, super awesome thing. It's It literally shows you every single tool preset that you have. And the OWB jitter is a, um, is a tool that I designed and it shows up here I can just put that into the uh, the brushes basically so when I hit the button it's going to toggle between the flat brush and the oil uh, the jitter brush so we're gonna leave it to that um, and also again B I like it to be the um, rough pencil just because I use that to um, to set up my sketch and then the C button now, in painting, the most important thing for me is to switch between the colors. Uh, there's a lot of colors always going on. So I noticed that, uh, you know, instead of the vector line stuff, which, you know, isn't important at all in the workflow of painting, uh, I prefer using switching drawing color, like drawing color, subcolor, and also the transparent color. So that's what I want to do. Uh, it is also under the option command. Again, it's an option inside a particular palette that's not in the menu bar top there. So let's go into settings. Um, it's going to be your drawing color and switch main and sub color. So that will be C. And the same thing with D, but instead of sub color, I am gonna do, um, sorry, drawing color and transparent color because this is, uh, basically the most important important two actions that I will be doing, uh, including and also the um, the color picker. Okay, so now as opposed to before zooming in and out, when I'm painting, I actually change my brush size a lot. So I'm going to go into this one, and then I'm going to set this one to um, brush size. So again, up, uh, increase, and then down, decrease. This is actually kind of satisfying. I just, when you know that you have set up the right button, it you know that it's going to get quicker and quicker. Um, and fit to screen, I'm fine with that actually. So uh, because this is a, a an action that I use a lot, so I prefer to have it scrolling instead of clicking the button. Okay, and then trigger button, uh, I want that to be color picker. So color picker is one of the tool, and it's eyedropper. <laughs> so I'm gonna select eyedropper. 
uh, change temporarily, that's fine. Uh, again, oops. Uh, again, direction pad, let's see. Uh, direction pad. So I reverted it to the direction pad would be zooming in and out because this one is slightly less important. Oops, I got the wrong one. Uh, that would be menu command and it's going to be view. Uh, so if I hit up, it's going to zoom in. Okay, so let's zoom in and again, menu command. Oh, oops, wrong view and then zoom out. Okay, so those are done. And then right, the other three I would do basically exactly the same thing, uh, which is going to be repeated tabs. <clears throat> Again, you know what I wish, I really wish that they have um, is that they can, you know, copy the settings to another one. I think that would really, really, really help. Okay, so the first one is um, a lasso tool. Like if I can just copy the first preset onto my second preset instead of having to like set all these up manually, that would be really awesome. Hopefully one day. Um, and then the second one is going to be menu, edit, transform, and scale and rotate. So this, these ones are the same as the last uh, last three. And this one is the tool. At first, it may seem really overwhelming when you are trying to do all of this, and it might feel like, oh my God, where do I find anything? But uh, the more you kind of just sort through all of these menus, the more you will understand like where to find the ones that you want. Okay, so quick access. All right, so that is blue. Now, right now it's red, so it's still in my line art preset. And if I press this button on the bottom again, it's going to change into blue. So now we will have the painting workflow. So if I press this one, it's going to go into the oil paint flat brush. Uh, if I hit um, B, it's going to give me the pencil. So uh, let's start with the most amazing drawing. I'll always just drop there, you know, because there it's easy, it echoes my name, <laughs> you know. And uh, okay, I'm gonna put another layer on the bottom and then just switch to the painting mode. And see, this is where I really like having the brush size just increase. I'm gonna select any color. Let's try, wow, that's a very ugly color, but that's okay. That, that, that's okay, right? Um, okay, and then uh, maybe have a lighter color. Okay, and then the trigger will color pick. No, color pick, so, so important. And one of the most important thing in digital art is color picking. Okay, and um, if I want to, uh, let's say I, drew a little bit too much outside, right? I don't like that, so I'm gonna press this one, which is going to switch to the transparent color over here, you see? Switching, oh, switching transparent color. So transparent color, okay. And then also if I press C, it's gonna go to the sub color, uh, and again, back to main color. So these two are uh, really important to me because I'm constantly changing the colors, right? And now I'm gonna maybe add a little bit of texture. Oh, sorry about that crazy um, cursor thingy. I really wanted the cursor to be uh, helping in this case and not like confusing, but there we have it. It just doesn't want to work. Okay, so I now have two colors uh, and I want to switch to my other paintbrush. Uh, so this one uh, adapts the draw, drawing color, the main color, and then the sub color. So I add a little bit of texture and I switch back to um, my main painting brush and I just start to, you know, carve out um, the thing. 
Okay. So that's kind of how I do painting workflow. I can really just uh, really fast uh, switch between all of my tools. And let's actually combine those. And again, if I want to select this part and I want to move it over here, transform, I can do that. And here's the next part that I like to do is the quick access. So quick access is a really good palette to compile many of the short keys that you want. Uh, so my quick access pop-up palette is attached to the Q button. So let me hit that and it's gonna give me this long palette. I have all of my brightness and contrast, hue and saturation, level, correction, blah, 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 um, over here. So um, I, I like this because it helps me change the colors immediately. So if I hit saturation, uh, oh, it jumps to another monitor. There you go. So, so I can um, increase the saturation, et cetera, for that. Um, or I can press it again. So right now my resolution is all out of whack and that's why you would see these things are jumping all over the place. Um, or if I want to, you know, like uh, level correct. <laughs> why? <laughs> okay, so if I want to have the levels here, I can do that as well. Or if I want to duplicate this uh, onto another one, I would just have the quick exit and then duplicate layer on there. So this is kind of how I compile this. And of course, quick access is really just its own entire shortcut. You can put literally anything onto these panels and you can have as, panel, uh, as many different sets as you want. Um, but quick access isn't really part of what we're gonna talk about today. So I've just quickly uh, covered these. Uh, but basically they are like this. It has a very similar menu to what you saw with the tap mate. So if you really understand uh, these settings, you can kind of cover all of these in one go when you're setting up the shortcuts. So you can add um, anything that you want. Like if I want to do a save us, for example, if I add it, it's gonna like go in there. So these are uh, basically what you do and then you can like reorganize all of these um, as you so wish. And you can also change the way that they look, like view, you can change into tile small. Uh, there is a lot of different things you can do with this. So uh, honestly, it's just, it's a, a real blessing. <laughs> Having all these shortcuts just really conveniently in the same thing. Um, okay, before I end, I will mention one thing that because this is a Bluetooth uh, device, it does also work with uh, tablets. So I have a Samsung um, Samsung Tab S7 Plus, and I basically just turn on the Bluetooth on my um, on my tablet, and then I have that discover the tap me, and I will discover it. So uh, and it will just connect immediately and it works exactly the same as I just showed you uh, now with the Samsung tablet or I think all of the Android tablets um, and basically Clip Studio Paint is the same on PC versus mobile uh, or so yeah, uh, it will be compatible. I think the only one that's not compatible is iOS uh, but other than that they work the same. So uh, this knowledge can carry on to the, the other devices that you own as well. All right, I think, <laughs> I think that's it. <laughs> that's All actually, right. uh, yeah. Um, yeah don't we don't have a lot of time left for questions. <laughs> <laughs> Darn it. Oh yeah. no. <laughs> um, I thought today, yeah, I thought today was going to be a super fast one because it's <laughs> straightforward. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh gosh, yeah. Um, let's just go through like um, one or two. So mm -hmm. um, for one, uh, the short there was a comment about how shortcut devices are a little bit intimidating. How long did it take you to get used to it? So for this one, um, in the beginning when I looked at that, a huge 
the, this huge entire thing, it was pretty intimidating. And I think it took me like a day or two. Uh, mm -hmm. I am a curious person. So I really like to like click into all of this to look at what they do, but it still took me some time to really like understood exactly what it was trying to do. Um, but for me, I always believe that, okay, if I get rid, uh, get across that first hurdle, uh, then it's really going to help me. I had that yeah. belief, so it really helped me overcome. So I hope today's session will make it a little less intimidating for you. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Um, do you usually use more than one set of settings? Mm, no, not really. So I basically did, I showed the uh, line art and the painting. I. Mm really only use these two um mm. and if i need to do anything that is outside of it for example designing like um like a like a, a post um or also do some editing then that's when i go back to my keyboard so these these two presets that i showed you is really just for my the main bulk of stuff that i do um but then i also do like a watercolor one uh, I have a watercolor style. So the watercolor style is another um, set of keys. So I use mm. three out of four. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, that's that's actually a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like yeah. that's a lot. I mean, you know, they were they were originally designed for like coloring and line mm. art and everything. That was like the base settings for all of them. So yeah. That's actually quite a lot if you lose th if you use three out of four. <laughs> yeah, because I feel I feel like every single type of style um, mm. that I use uh, has a very specific workflow, so I want to optimize that. And mm. and this is why like I really want to have the copy preset. <laughs> <laughs> Please give it to me. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, we we always have to let the dev team know what they what they're in for. And yes. adding next. <laughs> <laughs> That's very true. All right. Um, there is one question. I think this is a bit difficult to do right now. Uh, mm -hmm. But can you like show a little bit more? Like again, just what really quick, like a thing how you use the tab made and then use it in the exact uh, illustration process. I think the the vector one was pretty nice. Or uh, the mm -hmm. the erasing with transparent color was probably easy to see. Okay, so I would do that real quick. Let's let me just drag that over here. Okay, so uh, let me go back to this one. Um, so this one again, I have this a uh, zoom in, and my move button is actually on my pen. Uh, on my mm. Wacom pen. So that one is a, a separate thing entirely. But um, so I'm going to use B to switch to pencil and I'm going to draw a circle. Sorry, right now we are limited to just circles now. <laughs> <laughs> just <laughs> no circles. more. Yeah, just circles this is the hardest thing to draw. Okay, so I'm going to uh, decrease. And that is going to be my sketch layer. And then the vector layer is going to be uh, my main inking layer. And I'm going to switch to A. Uh, and I'm going to draw another circle. And also uh, A again, because I had the eraser attached to it. So I will erase some of that. Um, and C too, because there's like that little uh, ugly butt there. So I'm going to connect the vector, which is attached to C, and then just connect that. And because now that's not really like curvy, so I'm going to switch to D, which is dragging it uh, and then just kind of like smooth it out a little bit. Mm. So that is my uh, pen workflow. And then I can just go back to doing um, like this and then like pinch again. So this really, like I'm serious, this speeds up my workflow so much <laughs> it's actually kind of crazy how much it speeds mm. it up yeah yep so yeah hopefully that helps mm -hmm. okay thank you i think that's that's bare, like roughly the time we have for this. <laughs> yeah okay. again if you guys have questions uh since these are pretty robust just ask me on instagram i'll be happy to demonstrate them uh, a little bit more uh, but yeah 
I, I think we've covered everything today, hopefully. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> um, just a, a short note, um, the tablet is available on Amazon, mm -hmm. so you can get it there just in case you want to look it up. It's, it's available worldwide, technically. Uh, mm -hmm. Sometimes we run out of stock, but it will be restocked most of the times and most of mm. the days. So <laughs> just, yeah. just so you know. Yeah. Oh, uh, one last thing. So I didn't do redo yes. and undo. So mm -hmm. if I hold it down, it's going to continue to undo. If I hold it down, it's going to continue to. Oh, yeah. Right. So yeah, yeah <laughs> this is. Um, so that's why I set those up there um, because it's really convenient for me to cycle yeah. through the steps. Yeah. 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 I think it's also a default setting in one of the sets. Yeah, it just, that's it, just it is. Redo, undo, and it's just so it just goes so fast. You don't you really stop thinking about it, which buttons you press at some point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so having them all different shapes helps a lot. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and we had the question if the if the tab mates for left handed or right handed. It's for both because yeah. it's completely yeah. symmetrical. There mm -hmm. is no uh, preference to yeah. hand it this. <laughs> yeah, it's exactly the same. And that's what I really like about it because they're all so different. I literally, like this is literally the first time that I don't have to try hard to remember what I assigned to each button. Yeah. So. All right, I think, I think that's it for today. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> information overload. <laughs> Good luck, everybody. <laughs> so much. There's just so much to to talk about, and you know, like people can look on your stream and see you in action with it sometime. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Or on Instagram or wherever. <laughs> yep. So uh, we just want to thank you again, Sarajin. This was a very heavy and technical uh, webinar. Not <laughs> like the other ones and but you handled it pretty well and thank you so much for another thank great you. presentation thank you and also thank you joanna for handling also the questions and doubts from people yes yeah, sure. for more information learn more about clip studio pain in our site clipstudio.net forward slash n and graphicsly.com as joanna mentioned you can find the tab made on Amazon, but also in Graphicsly site on the oh, add-on yeah. section. Mm -hmm. And also this webinar has been recorded. If you have any doubts and you want to rewatch it again, uh, go to our YouTube channel, Clip Studio Paint channel and Graphicsly. And for more information about Sarah Jean, please don't forget to follow her on her social media as The One With Bear on Instagram, Earth Station, Twitch and Twitter. So with that, again, thank you so much, Joanna. Thank you so much, Sarah Jean. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Happy thank almost you Friday. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, all of you who joined us today. And we hope to see you in our next event. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.